Hello YouTube, Raj back with my newest acquisition. This is the GNL Tribute Series ASAT Classic Blues Boy. It's a lot of words uh, to say it's a new guitar. Um, so I got this on the musician friend deal of the day. It was $2.99, and uh, I think that's a great deal for this guitar. Um, and some of you that have this are probably calling BS already on it because you've realized that, hey, that doesn't look like my guitar. And you'd be right. I've made a few changes already, and I apologize for not having a before and after, but I, I needed... I needed this to be working so I didn't have a chance to, to shoot anything. But I'm going to explain why um, I've made the changes and what changes I've made. So real, real quick, for those of you that don't know, it's a Tele-style guitar uh, with the only change being having a humbucker in the neck. Uh, everything else is pretty much straight-ahead Tele. Um, it's got the classic GNL headstock, which is probably the only other headstock aside from Fender that I can actually deal with. Um, uh, Pass-through. So the ferrules are nice and flush with the body. Uh, the neck joint is tight, and uh, I love the mint green. I think they may call it surf green. I'm not really sure. Um, but oh, the the I, I I'm guessing this is a solid steel uh, stainless steel bridge. I don't really know, but the saddles are brass. Individual saddles need every string, so you can change the height and the intonation on every string, which is kind of cool. Um, Tele single coil in the, uh, in the bridge position. So, you know, all the usual Tele accoutrement and appointments with the exception of a humbugger here. So here are the changes I've made, which you may have noticed if you own this guitar or have been looking at it. So I have changed out the humbucker and I've changed it out for this, uh, cool d -Armand humbucker that I, uh, that I had off of a Fender for a short time. Well, they, they bought the Diarmid brand, and for a short time they produced some guitars under that name that were a little bit cheaper, kind of between the Squire and the Fender lines, uh, some hollow bodies and things that they didn't have in those lines. And uh, they were cheaper guitars, and actually they made a Guild Starfire custom uh, replica, which I bought, and which was kind of cheap, kind of cool, kind of cheap. But the pickups were great. They were USA Diarmid. So I've had it laying around. It's a killer pickup. I replaced it because... The pickup that was in this guitar was super uh, dark compared to, I guess, your more you know typical PAF. Some people, I've seen some reviews where people have said it sounds lifeless and dull, and I don't agree with that at all. I think that it's a really cool pickup if you're playing like straight ahead jazz or you just need something more mellow if you're playing bop or you know just anything more mellow, even maybe even some classic country stuff. I, I don't know. Uh, I do I do know that I think it'd be great for for you know for bop. Uh, straight ahead jazz, anything if, if you, you know, on a telly or whether it's on, I actually have a, a hollow body that I think I'm going to put that, I'm going to replace uh, the humbucker in there. I, I think it's actually a really good pickup, but not for a kind of your more classic telly deluxe or whatever they call, I don't think it's a deluxe, but you know, the custom maybe, with the the Keef, the Keef guitar with a humbucker and a single coil here. So uh, I think this is a more appropriate choice. Uh, another change I made was I replaced the volume pot, which is why this uh, the old knob wouldn't fit uh, on there. So um, I replaced the 250 pot with a 500 pot. I did that first, actually, to see if the, it would brighten up this the the uh, stock pickup, and it did a little bit. It opened it up a, a hair, uh, but it wasn't enough to make a to really sit with it. So I left that 500 in. I put this pickup in, uh, and the other change that you may notice is this neck is not the stark white uh, neck that you would have gotten when you ordered this thing, because I cannot bear the stark white wood. It's just a personal aesthetic preference. So um, right over the poly finish that was on there, which was a satin finish, um, I did a, a trans tint and, uh, and a true oil uh, mixture, a couple coats. There's people that say that won't work. But, you know, it seems to have worked just fine. True oil is not a real, uh, an actual oil. There's a hardener in there and whatever. So anyway, so it's got a bit more amber to it than you would have bought it with, which I think Greatly enhances the aesthetic, makes it look a little more, uh, a little more classic. That's totally personal preference. So those are the changes I've made. Tuners are the same. Oh, the string tree <laughs> is different because I lost the base of the other string tree. So, but it's the same style actually. Um, tuners are the same. Haven't really done any fret work. Uh, bridge is the same. Body's the same. Pick guard is the same for right now. I'm gonna 
replace that. I actually ordered already ordered two, uh, just for aesthetic reasons. But so I've already kind of gone over the, the the problem with the the the, hum, the humbucker that was on the guitar. You know, it's it may maybe you'll love it. Uh, and and I will say that in the in between position, it was pretty darn usable. It was uh, it was you know got like a little bit of the quack, but um, still had plenty of body. It just I needed the humbucker to be where I needed it. That's the project I I bought this guitar for. So um, anyway, uh, quality of the pots is great. Uh, I know I replaced this one, but it was it was fine. The switch feels really solid, um, more solid than a you know. Uh, just as solid as a, an American uh, made Fender. Uh, I owned a GNL Legacy, but it's been a while, so I can't really compare them directly. But anyway, uh, the guitar one uh, intonated pretty well, fairly easily. The break angle on the strings uh, after the intonation was set is pretty good. Uh, I don't have any idea what the exact angle is, but it's not not too tough. Um, I will say that it's a little bit interesting uh, on their guitars on the bridge. Uh, you may not be able to see this all that well, but the screw, so the strings come up through the hole, through the ferrule, and pretty much all of these strings are actually touching the spring on the screw for the intonation adjustment. And I say pretty much, and I, th eh, maybe the E, high E isn't. But I think the rest are. I don't see, there's no adverse effect that I can imagine, and maybe they designed it that way. It looks like they designed it that way. No matter how much you push these saddles over, I think that's going to be the case, uh, you know, to get your strings, make sure that they're all, you know, uh, parallel with the neck. So anyway, that's a lot of crap to say. Um, this is the bridge pickup. Uh, some people have commented that it doesn't have the same spank as a traditional tele bridge pickup. Um, I would agree with that to some extent. I think that it's completely usable. And if you're, unless you're playing, unless you need exactly that old school country sound, this would probably do you maybe better. Depends, you know, depends on your music. But I think this, compa I'm comparing this to my 52, which has the AVRI, you know, pickups, which I love. And I they're kind of the standard that I uh, base other tele pickups off of. This has a little more body. Uh, it's a little hotter. Maybe quite a bit hotter. I don't know. I've, I've just kind of balanced them out uh, in height to try to balance out between these two. But but it has more body than that one. But it doesn't have quite the snap. It doesn't have quite the uh, the uh, the high end extension as that one. But anyway, this is the bridge uh, stock. So. <laughs> Still has plenty of uh, body on the low end, comparatively. Uh, but it, it, you know, it, it may be a little, a little less uh, transparent or aggressive on top. I, for me, for what I do, uh, which is not country, uh, that's actually, I think it's more usable. Well, you know, time will tell. Um, I will say this: the middle position, I'm not going to even play it because this pickup. They're out of phase. Well, I'll play it for you. This is what it sounds like. So you can see the the uh, it's dropped dramatically in, in in volume. The tone is. Very weird. Uh, kind of cool for very particular stuff. And um, but it's just wrong. Uh, so eventually I'll pull this. Uh, I say eventually when I get the other pick card, I'm going to I'm going to do this all in one foul swoop. I'll pull this up take the cover off, swap the magnet, and hopefully that'll do the trick. Um, so uh, in the uh, in the neck position, uh, the, the guitar, like I said, it was you know it was too it was too dark, but it's it's very warm and uh, and very usable. thing about that for me is that it, it is warm and thick and it would take I'm not gonna I don't have any pedals or uh, or a Marshall in here right now this I'm playing this through a, 
a deluxe reverb reissue. Um, but it's thick, you know, but it's still got clarity, no clarity. Very responsive to pick up to your pick position. Now, as this is my only telly that's got a humbucker, I can't say how it how it really uh, compares to other tellies with humbuckers. But I will say this: that um, compared to uh, my 335 build, which has amazing uh, uh, the the Seymour Duncan Antiquities that I absolutely love, um, and I play in the neck position most of the time on that one. This actually has a lot more tonal variation. depending on where I pick. And I think that maybe that's just inherent to the telly. Um, maybe because it's passed through the body and the string tension here is a lot, probably a lot higher. But there's a lot of nice pick definition. That's not the typical sound that people look for from a classic, you know, a Tele Classic or whatever it's called with the, the Keefe guitar, but it's kind of what I was looking for for right now, so it, it, it fills, fulfills my needs. I know it's not a great review uh, of the stock guitar, but I do think it's still a great value. I think this guitar normally goes for about four. I got it for three. Uh, at $400, I, th I think it's probably a good, it's a decent guitar. It's, it's probably, you know, a couple steps above any of the budget guitars you're going to get. Um, I think it's a step above, the overall quality is a step above the Squire. There are things about the Squire that are uh, better. I think stock, the Squire pickups, I'm talking about the classic vibe Squire. Uh, I think those pickups will probably suit more people uh, out of the box. Um, it's probably a big reason for its success. Because at that, at, that, at that price point, uh, that's a really good sounding guitar. Um, really, you know, twice the price point. That's the that's the inherent flaw with this guitar. I, I don't think most people are going to like that, uh, are going to find that pickup combination stock all that useful. Um, I did not myself, but I'm going to I'm going to reuse that pickup. So I, there's no harm, no foul as far as I'm concerned. Uh, you know, if you're looking for if you're looking for the one guitar that you play all the time and it's got to, it has to stay stock, this probably wouldn't be the one I buy at 400 bucks. Uh, at 300 bucks, it's tough. It's a really tough call. I mean, I, I felt I feel like it's a great value for me because I got, you know, a pickup that I paid 50, 60 bucks for probably uh, that I'm gonna put in another guitar. So I killed a couple birds with stones here. Um, what else can I say? Um, I really haven't even. Uh, I didn't do much to the nut. I, I don't think I did anything to the nut actually. And, it, and the intonation holding quite well. Um, Plays great all the way up. I will say this as a last thing here, and this isn't really inherent to this guitar, but if you're a, if you tweak stuff uh, like I do, that you'll want to know this. So I bought this guitar at the day, a day after I I, I got this um, before I received it, day after I, I purchased it, before I received it, I bought a maple neck with a rosewood fingerboard uh, off Amazon from I don't know how you say it, Commence. K M I S E. I'm sure if you're a budget friendly guitar player, you've seen these things on Amazon. Pretty much, if you do a, a search for a neck, it's the first thing that comes up. They're 35 bucks, right? So I figured I would take a, ch a chance and see what it was like. And I ordered that neck uh, to maybe use on this guitar, you know, just before I before I got it, and um, and I received it. I took this neck off because I was going to do the finish work anyway. And that guitar, that excuse me, that neck. Went on here just fine. I screwed it in. It didn't have screw holes. Um, I screwed it in, and uh, right away I found that the intonation would. It, I could almost not get it to set. Uh, as a matter of fact, I kind of gave up um, after I initially did the screw. So I figured it was just a problem with the neck. I shimmed. I uh, put a shim in the bottom of the pocket, and I put the neck back in, and I screwed another set of holes in, and I did get the intonation set pretty well. Uh, with that, with that neck, I, um, uh, 
I'll, I'll say this as a quick side note for those necks. All the way up to the 10th fret, it was great. First of all, the nut was total crap. You should probably replace that nut. I, I, I did some uh, some filing, and it still was pretty questionable. I couldn't get it. It was way too high to begin with. So once I, once I got it uh, flattened out a little bit, it was better, but that's still worth 20 bucks to buy uh, a nut, which is funny since that's more than half the price of the guitar, but I'm of the neck. Past the 10th fret, I had all sorts of problems. High frets, uh, that were pull, I think, that were pulling out. I'm not much of a, I can't do a whole lot of fret work myself. I've never done it. I should probably learn, but uh, it needed severe fret work. So I ripped that off and I ended up putting this neck back on. But as, a, uh, as it relates to this guitar, when I had this neck off, I tried putting this neck into a old Baja, uh, Fender Baja Tele body that I had laying around and it would not fit. Uh, and it wouldn't, I, I mean, I, not that I was trying to force it in, but I think it, in order to get that neck into that fender pocket, it was going to require some pretty heavy-duty sanding. Um, so that's interesting. And, and, you know, this neck pocket here, uh, it's probably the biggest difference of a fender in, in this in this GNL. This part right here is quite a bit uh, smaller. This lip that comes up that holds that neck in, quite a bit smaller. I mean, it's still plenty of... It's still plenty of pocket for this neck, but on a, on a fender, it's probably another good half inch. Maybe I'm just kind of eyeballing it from what I'm looking at. And uh, so the other neck fit in here fine, and I could square it up just fine. Uh, but just, I don't know, buyer beware. If, if you're buying it for that specific purpose, so you can rip it apart and use, you know, uh, parts for other guitars, beware. <laughs> That's another long-winded review, and uh, I hope that it uh, I hope that it helps you out. So uh, what we've taken away from this is it's a great value. Probably have to change out the neck pickup. Uh, I hate stark white necks, and True Oil with Trans Tint will go over a satin poly finish. Yeah. So uh, thanks for watching, and if you have any questions, post them below, and I'll uh, do my best to answer. All right. Happy playing.